Welcome friends to another r slash entitled parents video. Today we've got a crazy story of parents suing for a kid that they had already abandoned. But first a story from Demona. When I was 9, a woman told me her son was scared because of my giant size. With a friend, 9 and 10 year old female, we were playing in the McDonald's game area. We had a woman calling us so we went to her. We didn't know her and she wasn't an employee. She yelled at us, you two are too old to play here. I told her the sign says we're allowed to play until 12 years old. I'm 9 and my friend's 10. She looked at me specifically and responded, Can't you see you're abnormal? You look like a 14 year old child. You're not allowed to play here. Only your friend can, even if she's older than you. I was so shocked. She kept going, Because of you, my son can't play here. You're too scary and you make this place unsafe by your giant size. I refused to answer that, then she left, obviously upset. I saw her going to her car, oddly I didn't see any child with her, maybe it was just a Karen. Anyway, I didn't play at McDonald's anymore and never forgot what she said. Because of her, I really thought I was abnormal, but now when I look at 9 year old myself, I wasn't a giant, maybe a little taller than some children of my age, but not like a 14 year old child. Why is it when I hear this story, I just picture like Shaq in kids clothes? We just got Shaquille O'Neal out here with one of those pinwheel hats and a big old lollipop in one hand just playing in the McDonald's play area. You can't play here cause you're abnormal. In all seriousness though, how messed up is it to go and tell a kid that they're abnormal? Also, does anybody else actually miss playing in the McDonald's play areas as kids? It's definitely a time gone by kind of thing. Or in retrospect, is that whole thing kind of just too gross? Especially the ball pits that were attached to those things. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next story is from Mikey Bonbon 1988 New neighbor is a religious nut job psycho Karen. Long story short, after much deliberation, I decided to downsize my life. My old home just became too much house for me, and I decided to sell and buy a small three bedroom home in a nice area closer to my girlfriend. The move went excellent. I had movers, and my friend came over to help me set up the place. It's a nice little place, three bedrooms, three bathrooms, an outdoor pool, a detached garage that's now home to my gym. Because my friends don't live in the town I moved to, they're mostly staying at a hotel in the area so we can chill over the week. Last night is when I had my first unfortunate introduction to the new neighbor. My girl and the crew had finished setting up my new place, and with any move that the crew helps with, I supply the obligatory pizza and beer. We weren't being loud, I wouldn't even call it a dull roar, just some old friends chilling. We've moved way past the rowdiness of our youth. Now we're just chilling when the front door to the house swings right open and out marches the star of the story, Mrs. Karen. Scraggly hair, old bathrobe, she fit the entire busybody stereotype. This woman marched herself over to the front porch, put her hands on her hips, didn't say a word and just stared. I hadn't had the opportunity to introduce myself to any of the neighbors electric and just got fully moved in. So that's what I did. I said, hey, I was planning on visiting you tomorrow to introduce myself, but now's a good time. I'm Mikey. Everyone calls me Rabbit. It's great to meet you. The normal new neighbor speak. That woman didn't say a darn thing. Just stood there with that disapproving look you get from your parents when you were caught doing you know what for the first time. She finally broke that awkward silence to say, and what do you think you're doing? I replied, we're just chilling, having a beer. You're more than welcome to come and chill with us. We were also smoking some weed. That woman almost exploded screaming, what you're doing is wrong and disgusting, illegal, immoral and wrong, doing the finger wag of shame. My buddy CJ, I've spoke about him before, he's an ex-bouncer turned dentist. He's a huge dude, a six foot eight beast with tree trunks for arms. He said, hey Karen, we're not being loud, we're just chilling, so kindly freak off. She flipped out, screaming, you degenerates can't do this, I have kids, I won't allow you perverts to corrupt them, and marched back to her house. The other members of the crew said, bye Karen. I thought it was the end of it, but oh no, a minute later, Karen marches back out with a freaking cross in her hand, spouting some religious gobbledygook. And yeah, CJ being CJ said, Hey Karen, you forgot the garlic necklace. She once again screamed degenerates, I'm calling the police. Another friend of mine, Jack, we all call him Frost for obvious reasons, said, we should get the stereo out. We had it all set up and Karen came back out with the phone in her hand, standing on her porch. 
Will Frost put on some of our favorite songs from back in the day. Who let the dogs out? You could see the hate in her eyes. She actually did call the cops. They came and we chatted for a minute and they agreed we weren't doing anything wrong. We were well within the noise limit and left without much trouble. Karen stood on her porch watching us with a look of contempt. Ross said, hey, I know what will get rid of her. Ross pressed a few buttons on his phone and guess what starts playing? Me so horny. And yeah, Karen went in with a red face. The cop showed back up, had a laugh and explained that this is normal. They know about that crazy witch. I had the chance to talk to the other neighbors. They thought it was funny as freak. So yeah, she's known in the neighborhood as a bit of a runt. I'm having most of the street over this weekend for a barbecue and more choice music. I'm just glad that this is a situation where OP can basically fraternize with the other neighbors in the street and that it isn't some like league of Karens, right? Thank God for OP's sake, they didn't move into this neighborhood where it was nothing but a bunch of scraggly, easily offended Karens that are just ready to call the cops and do whatever they can to make sure everybody conforms to their vision of living. By the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. Our next story is from Lazar Yeet Meta. You're not allowed to be in pain because you're scaring your grandma. Part 4, The Finale Yes, this story has a part 4. It happened a few months ago in June, and to preface the story, I'm fine. I'm not badly injured, I haven't had any pain from this particular thing in almost two months. Also, I'm finally in college and out of my parents' house, and I'm working towards cutting off all contact with them. Anyways, the injury, I was in my parents' room and I crouched down to grab something off the floor when my knee popped. Loudly. I collapsed from the pain and I stayed on the ground for about two hours because I couldn't move my leg. My parents continued to go on with their night the entire time. Eventually, they brought my brother in to carry me to my room so that I could go to bed. When he picked me up, my knee straightened out and it felt like my leg was coming apart. Imagine someone tore up all the muscles and ligaments in your knee so that your calf was only attached to your thigh by the skin. That's what it felt like. So naturally, I screamed in pain. The scream was so agonizing and blood curdling that my mother, who had been completely emotionless up until that point, burst into tears. So did my sister, but at least she was concerned about me before that. Anyways, we get to my room and I go to bed after taking a large amount of Advil. The next day, my knee starts feeling a fair bit better and I had plans to watch Top Gun Maverick with a friend and since that didn't involve walking, my parents let me go. When I was walking out, my knee popped again and the pain almost completely went away. I was scheduled to start work at Amazon two days later and since the pain was still gone, I went. The first two days were fine, but the third day, my knee gave out and the pain came back with a vengeance. I could barely walk on my own, and wouldn't you know it, but they hid my injury from my grandma, again. In fact, they hid it from my entire extended family and forced me not to talk about it and even pretend like I was fine. Why did I do that? Because even at 18, they still had power over me. After all, I didn't pay for the roof over my head. Fortunately, Amazon made me get an MRI before I came back to work, and it came back clear. I was going to go to physical therapy, but there wasn't anyone who had an appointment before I went to college. So I just went back to work. It got better eventually, and I'm now thriving in college. Unfortunately, I'll have to see my parents today, as my great uncle passed away, and they'll be at his funeral. And I'll see them again when I fly back home for an orthodontist appointment, but after that... I should be fine to cut them off. Thank you all for your support throughout this years long saga. I know I haven't responded to everyone who's commented on one of these posts, but I did read them all. Your encouragement and advice has helped me more than you can ever know. And I can confidently say that I wouldn't be where I am without you guys. Here's to a new abuse free chapter of my life. It's definitely not my place to speculate, but I'm kind of curious what that condition is with the knee. I'm wondering if it's like some kind of joint thing where it can kind of dislocate or I don't know. Because to go and have an MRI and it just totally comes back clean, that's kind of curious. I mean, beyond being able to cut off their parents and focus on themselves, I hope in the future OP is in a position where they can get some more medical attention on what their knee dislocating is all about. Our next story is from Restless Mind 95 
he doesn't know any better, follow up. A while back, I, 27-year-old male, shared a post in this group about my older brother's, 31, inappropriate and sexually predatory behavior toward my girlfriend, 23, and how my parents were condoning and making excuses for his behavior. The excuse being that he's autistic so he doesn't know any better, even though both of us are autistic, and both of us are considered high-functioning and low-support needs. Anyway, since that incident, my girlfriend and I have gotten an apartment together and things have been going well. My parents have been very low contact because they're salty I didn't dump my girlfriend and excuse my brother's creepy behavior. During this whole situation, my grandfather's been nothing short of a rock for me. He and my step-grandmother have been offering me advice, helped me get career counseling services, want to help with my tuition now that I'm back in college and have offered to buy plane tickets for both my girlfriend and I to fly across country to spend Thanksgiving with them and get the opportunity to introduce my girlfriend to them. He's been very clear that he sides with me on the disagreement with my parents, because he doesn't agree with my brother's behavior and has stated the obvious that my parents don't seem to grasp, which is that I'm a grown man and can date who I want and live my life as I see fit. I feel really lucky to have him around but at the same time I'm still incredibly frustrated with my parents. I have a large extended family and I've heard through the grapevine that my parents want me to move back with them, but on their terms, and they're going low contact with me to teach me a lesson. And all I can think is that what the freak kind of delusional fairy tale world do they live in where I would abandon a healthy relationship with my girlfriend? and having my own place to move back in with them just to be the scapegoat for all of my brother's BS. Sadly, while reading a lot of entitled parent stories, there's often parents of kids who have autism that are just enablers, who refuse to try to even correct their child at all and just hand wave any bad behavior away. And especially, I imagine when the kids were younger, not trying to correct them at all probably reinforced just all of this negative behavior. It's just disappointing to see and obviously OP should not have to move back and deal with any of that. I say honestly if it makes the most sense to cut them off for your sanity, cut them off. Our next story is by Craggle Tom. Evil Mama Bear has finally left the building. This I hope will finally be my last post. I know I've basically not been on at all for the past few months but I needed a break from my own mental health. And while it's been a long time coming, I finally have a final update on Evil Mama Bear for everyone. Evil Mama Bear has finally sold her house and left for Texas. And yes, she did try a few more tricks to get her way, but none of them worked. Past readers know well how hated Evil Mama Bear was by pretty much everyone. Well, despite saying that she was going to sell her house, she took her sweet time doing it. So her neighbors got more gnomes and put them in their yards. Not sure if that really did much of anything since evil mama bear would only leave her house every few days to run errands anyway. Her house and car were both vandalized again. But this time at the same time, both her car and front door had the words WITCH GET OUT written on all caps on them with red spray paint. Pretty sure it was the same person who vandalized evil mama bear's car and front door before. The car had WITCH GET OUT spray painted on both sides going from end to end in big letters. Evil Mama Bear had a massive tantrum when she came out and saw the graffiti in the afternoon. She marched out in the street, looking around like she was expecting to see someone, stood there looking pissed for a few minutes, then went back into her house to, I assume, call the police, because they were there not long after. I know all this because the neighbor who lives across from Evil Mama Bear still sends me video footage of her antics, which have become few and far apart these days. Evil Mama Bear mostly just came and went to get groceries. Her neighbors described her as becoming eerily quiet. Mostly all that can be heard is her TV. They don't even see her on the back patio unless someone's there to do the yard work. Not really sure who she'd been paying to do it lately, but no teenagers would come to mow her lawn for 10 bucks anymore. And yes, I know it's not exactly nice that the neighbors look into Evil Mama Bear's backyard. But they've all hated her for so long that they've become accustomed to watching her every move. How can someone become so hated that literally everyone goes to this level? Such a level that there's literally an entire information network dedicated to keeping an eye on her. Believe it or not, I only got some of the information. 
A lot of the people who are still communicating with each other about evil mama bear are former co-workers, neighbors, family members, somebody she yelled at a few times walking their dog, etc. It's more people than I know. I grew up with this nasty woman as a mother, and I should understand this obsession more than anyone. But I still can't fathom why. Why she is the way she is. And why those who hate her for far less reasons than me are still willing to keep an eye on her just as much as if they were watching a soap opera. They might as well just be living next to a being that needs to be contained by the SCP Foundation. And what's even sadder is that she made no effort to improve herself, just manipulate. It's all she knows how to do. And now that it no longer works, she's shut down. And now I'm rambling more than I should be. Anyway, a few neighbors and family members even admitted to me that they sent evil mama bear several letters telling her to just move away already because she's not doing herself or anyone else any favors by delaying. And many of the letters, I'm told, were not so politely worded because all the crap evil mama bear has done over the years came boiling to the surface throughout her side of the family. On the same day Evil Mama Bear called the police about the vandalization of her car and front door, I was called to go to the police station once again because Evil Mama Bear unsurprisingly tried to blame me for what happened. Blaming me is pretty much her go-to, but you all know that well by now. And just like last time, I had my lawyer there and proved I had nothing to do with it because I had camera footage from the inside and outside of my house showing I never went anywhere when the graffiti happened. I've gotten rather used to covering my butt in case evil mama bear wanted to frame me for something, but in her head, she more than likely believes beyond a shadow of a doubt I'm responsible. The police themselves admitted they knew it likely wasn't me already, but they had to follow up on any possible leads. I saw the nighttime camera footage from the neighbor who lives across from evil mama bear's house. And just like before, it was a shadowy figure who snuck in like a ninja, spray painted the graffiti on the car and house, and took off just as fast as they showed up. We still have no idea who this person is, but I wouldn't mind giving them a medal for their work. Evil Mama Bear has no shortage of enemies, so it could be anyone. The car had the graffiti on it for about a week before Evil Mama Bear had it cleaned off. The front door wasn't so lucky this time and had to be repainted. Evil Mama Bear still had the house up for sale at the time, so she had to keep it pretty. Evil Mama Bear, not two weeks after the graffiti incident, ended up going to the hospital after a bad fall she got while very drunk. She'd hurt one of her legs, dislocated her arm, and got a concussion from what I've heard. But that's all secondhand knowledge, so I'm not positive. But she was hurt. Her neighbors told me that an ambulance came for her and she made a big show of flailing around and demanding painkillers from the EMTs as they wheeled her out. My sister got a call from the hospital, and the nurse on the phone was saying evil mama bear was pleading for my sister to come see her because she was worried she might be dying. My sister refused to come and said that the hospital was not to contact her about evil mama bear again. They apologized and said they wouldn't bother anymore but Evil Mama Bear convinced another nurse to call from a different number a few hours later. She must have really been hamming it up to try and make this work. My sister had to explain the situation to the nurse and how she has an active restraining order against Evil Mama Bear for a long list of reasons. The nurse was initially mortified that my sister would leave her mother suffering alone in the hospital, But as soon as my sister explained the truth about Evil Mama Bear and what she's done, the nurse heavily apologized and said she'll make sure no one calls again. And no one did. That must have been one lonely stay in the hospital for Evil Mama Bear. Evil Mama Bear later sent my sister a letter through our lawyer after she got out of the hospital. I guess with the restraining order in place, she didn't want to risk sending it to my sister directly. I read the letter once before my sister had our lawyer archive it, and the simplified version of it was something like this. Dear daughter, I know I screwed up, more than words can ever say, but I just can't bear to be without you. I'm so lonely now and I'm begging you one last time. Come to Texas with me before you marry that man. We can start over together there, just the two of us. I know how much you like big men dressed as cowboys. I like them too. We can even go horseback riding together. It'd be so fun. The rest of the letter pretty much just droned on in repetition about why my sister should leave everything behind to run away with evil mama bear to Texas, and what about Texas was so nice. 
but my sister never responded. We also noted the fact that the letter pointed out multiple times just the two of them, meaning Evil Mama Bear was not including my infant nephew in her twisted fantasies of whisking my sister away like Peter Pan. My nephew wasn't mentioned once in the letter in any fashion, and the boy's father only briefly. Granted, she didn't use the racial slurs this time. My sister nearly picked up a phone to call Evil Mama Bear and hammer her, but she settled for making a Facebook post detailing what the letter said instead. And a few relatives from both my family and future brother-in-law's family all went right to Evil Mama Bear's house in a big group to yell at her. From what I'm told, they called her a man-hating witch who won't even acknowledge her grandson's existence. She'd rather my sister leave her child behind and run off with Evil Mama Bear to Texas. But my sister would never do something like that. Evil Mama Bear apparently cried and accused them of all being sent by me, which they denied. Then she threatened to call the police on the lot of them if they didn't leave, but I think they made their point. Every time Evil Mama Bear tries to get help, my sister will come back to her. Somebody like me comes along and tears her down again. In happy news for a change, my sister and future brother-in-law got married in early August. It was a small courthouse wedding, and we held a private reception in my backyard afterward. Of course, Evil Mama Bear knew about it. She's likely been stalking all of the family Facebook pages. My security cameras caught Evil Mama Bear in her car, driving by my house once during the reception. She slowed down to a stop and just sat there for a couple minutes while looking out the driver window. She had a wine bottle in hand and was taking small drinks of it, then gasped suddenly and was gone. Not sure what she was thinking, nor do I care. I just gave the footage to my lawyer just in case we needed to report Evil Mama Bear for violating the restraining order and drinking and driving. The reception went very smoothly though, and my sister and now brother-in-law are very happy together. And my little nephew's doing great too. Though, even after having the baby, my sister says she can't stop craving gummy worms. As for me, I'm still not in therapy yet. Yeah, I know, excuses, excuses. But things have been improving. I've been steadily focusing on trying to get my life back to where it was before evil mama bear entered the picture again and my girlfriend's been a big supporter of that. We took a small vacation together, and I'm honestly thinking that I want to propose to her someday soon. She completes me, and I'm not sure how I could live without her. Now, back to evil mama bear. Her house took some time to sell because she priced it way too high, but she finally dropped it to a much more realistic amount for the area after it didn't sell for months, and she finally sold it. My guess is my sister getting married finally killed Evil Mama Bear's seemingly endless hope that she'd win in the end. Because the move started only a few weeks after my sister tied the knot, Evil Mama Bear was seen unloading a lot of brand new cardboard boxes from her car. And a few days later, a large moving truck came and some men carried out a lot of Evil Mama Bear's stuff. A friend of one of the Evil Mama Bear's neighbors went to her open house while the house was still for sale and Evil Mama Bear was including lots of the furniture with the house. I suppose that's smart with the distance she'd be moving to Texas, especially if she's downsizing, which I find likely. I know the old house she grew up in is long gone, so I guess she's either built or building a new house in its place, or just got a manufactured home or something. Nobody in the family really knows though. We've got no friends or relatives left in Texas on Evil Mama Bear's side of the family. The last of them died out over a decade ago and everyone else moved to surrounding states over the past 30 years. Not really sure what made them all leave. Evil Mama Bear's cousins all said they left for college and just didn't come back because they liked where they settled. And most of the older relatives that lived down there are just gone. So there's really no one left to ask. Though I suppose this works out in Evil Mama Bear's favor, as no one will know her down there anymore, and if there are any that somehow do, they'll probably remember her how she was as a kid 40 plus years ago. Her parents were huge racists, so if I were to speculate, a lot of the family left to keep away from them. Both of my maternal grandparents died over 20 years ago, and my dad never let us have any contact with them. For good reason, too. He wanted nothing to do with racists and neither do I. 
Evil Mama Bear was also so hated in the community that one of her neighbors actually followed the moving truck for well over 50 miles to make sure that it was actually leaving long distance and not just going somewhere close by. They didn't stop following until Evil Mama Bear and the moving truck pulled into a rest stop and they didn't want to be seen so they turned back. But Evil Mama Bear and the moving truck were heading west everyone's fingers are crossed that evil mama bear doesn't come back ever again. A few of her former neighbors held a celebration. It was a party with a gnome theme, like gnomes galore. I was a bit busy and couldn't attend, but I heard they had a lot of fun. Evil Mama Bear's neighbor also sent me a picture showing a few gnomes in Evil Mama Bear's front yard. I guess some neighbors put them over there in the middle of the night as a joke before the new owners moved in. I can only imagine how long they've been waiting to do something like that. The house is now occupied by a nice middle-aged couple with kids, and they don't seem to mind gnomes as decor. My sister was basically jumping for joy when we found out Evil Mama Bear is gone. It's been a wild ride, but everyone is happy. Except for Evil Mama Bear, that is. We were almost counting on her doing something insane to violate the restraining order and get herself arrested again. But we're just as happy, if not more so, that she didn't. Because it means she's left without any more trouble. She just disappeared like a fart in the wind. My sister's never gonna tell her son Evil Mama Bear even exists. And I don't blame her. She's got some awesome grandparents on his father's side. I guess that's about all there is to say. It's been a wild ride. I admit when I first started posting here, I was hot-blooded and even somewhat eccentric about it. So no wonder people said they thought it was the writing of a teenager. I posted a lot and told nearly everything I could remember. I say nearly because there was more, but it would have just been more the same. Evil Mama Bear did this. Evil Mama Bear did that. She did a lot, and not just to me. And I will get therapy in time. I know I need it. But for a while, coming here was my therapy. But how much can someone talk about the same crazy person before it stops making them happy to do it? I'm certainly not happy talking about Evil Mama Bear anymore. I used to get a rush telling people about the crap she did to me, but now I realize that hating her was too much of my identity. And finally getting payback was satisfying, but also seemed to leave a void. One that I tried to fill the wrong way. But no more. Now that Evil Mama Bear's left, it's time to move on. She's not a factor in our lives anymore, and she's destined to be forgotten. I'm thankful for everyone who's taken the time to read and listen to all my problems. Coming here gave me a great place to vent and have a few laughs, but I'm finally satisfied telling all I needed to tell about my insane mother. She's finally far away from us and out of our lives for good. We'll keep a measure of our guard up, like keeping the cameras going and carrying pepper spray, but otherwise we can finally relax. Evil Mama Bear is gone. I'm just glad it's over. And we can all hope that Evil Mama Bear never returns. Though I can imagine it's as being like some sort of Star Wars parody. Episode 2, Revenge of the Evil Mama Bear. Either way, I'm going to work hard on bettering myself now. No more Evil Mama Bear to worry about. My sister's safe and married into an awesome family. And my business is doing great. Right now, my biggest concern is what I'll be wearing for Halloween this year. If anyone guessed a gnome costume... I think it may be time to put that to rest. Anyway, I've rambled enough. Thank you everyone for reading. It's finally over, and I'm happy. Basically, if anybody wasn't here for the wild ride that was the Evil Mama Bear saga, it was an evil mama that literally was like racist, accusatory, damaged things, tried to uproot OP's sister from their spouse, mainly because I assumed the color of his skin. I mean, it was an ongoing saga with restraining orders, court cases, the police being called, the whole neighborhood watch. It was quite an incredible saga. And honestly, I'm just happy for everybody that it's over and she's gone. And our final story of the day is from Tester33333. Chinese parents abandon their two-year-old daughter, then sue her for parental maintenance. After a woman in China refused to buy her younger brother an apartment, her estranged parents filed a lawsuit for 5,000 yuan, approximately 71,818 US dollars, in parental maintenance. The woman, 29-year-old Zhang from Guangzhou of southern China, was abandoned by her biological parents when she was two years old and has no relationship with them. 
She was reportedly abandoned as her biological parents could not financially support her and they rarely contacted her throughout her life. Zhang was raised by her father's sister and considers her aunt's family to be her biological family. When Zhang recently used her savings to buy her cousin an apartment, her biological parents reappeared in her life and reportedly demanded that she buy her biological brother an apartment as well. After Zhang refused, her estranged parents filed a lawsuit against her for 5,000 yuan in parental maintenance. The court ruled that although Zhang is not obligated to buy her brother an apartment, she must negotiate the amount with her parents and pay the parental maintenance fee. Under the Civil Code of China, adult children have a legal obligation to support their parents, regardless of estrangement or abandonment. So, there was already plenty of bones to pick with China and the way of life over there, but little did I know there's yet another thing to throw up on the pile. This is an insane legal obligation. Imagine two years old getting left on some doorstep. You grow up 16 years later or even later and you're doing super well for yourself and they show back up and say, all right, fork over a large amount of money that you worked so hard to achieve on your own. That is insane. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another insane entitled parent story, click on that left video. Or if you missed my latest video, check out the one on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.